Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Depression Diaries. This is episode 7, I think. I'm doing pretty well. Um, today I am going to be mostly focusing on trying to get through an entire 5 minute video without saying um more than about 10 times, let's say. So let's see how that goes. The subject today that I want to talk about is social anxiety. It's something I've suffered with most of my adult life, I think. I think um, definitely from being a teenager onwards, it's something I've been maybe aware of. Maybe not, not called it social anxiety, but definitely aware that I don't like going outside. I don't like crowds of people. Um, any opp I just said um, any opportunity I can get to not have to interact with people I will take. Uh, some are uh, like it, this manifests in a load of different ways. Uh, it, it's come to mind today particularly because there's a couple of things I've noticed that definitely play into this. The first one is um, I ordered some medication from my doctors. It's my antidepressants and some stomach things because I'm a middle-aged man. We all have stomach problems. Um, at least my knees work, so I've got that going for me. Anyway, I ordered some medication a couple of days ago using the Ask My GP service, which is a brilliant online service. You just put your thing on, the doctors reply. Now, they've not actually um, actioned that. And it's been sat there a couple of days. So I'm going to have to ring the doctor's surgery. Which, you know, if you're a normal, <laughs> well-adjusted person, it's probably not a big deal. You just ring them up, you sit on hold for like an hour, maybe, speak to someone and get it sorted. I have been procrastinating about this for, it's now 11 o'clock. Uh, doctors opened at nine o'clock, so a good couple of hours. I've been umming and ahhing. Um, I've had a couple of meetings in that time, so you know it's not entirely procrastination, but there's definitely an element of that. And in fact, <laughs> the reason I've decided to make this video now is because it means that I don't have to ring the doctors because I'm making a video. So I might drag this video away a bit, um, find some other things to talk about, try not to say um, and then eventually I will have to ring the doctors. Uh, I've already missed one day of my antidepressants, which probably isn't great. And that's purely because I could have run the doctors yesterday, found lots of reasons not to do it, and just ended up not doing it. And that, I think, is, is quite common i will do just about anything i can to avoid having to ring someone up uh, if i can use an online system i'll do that quite happily no problem with that if i have to do a zoom call so a lot of my meetings at work are zoom calls i'll talk about work again in a minute but yeah a lot of them at work are zoom calls i don't really mind that I'm not sure what the difference is between a Zoom call and seeing someone in person, but I'd much rather do a Zoom call. I think maybe there's like, there's emotional, like body language and stuff that you get from an in-person meeting and being probably autistic, um, I, I don't get that body language and I don't get that emotional stuff. And I think because on a, like a Zoom call levels the playing field, so you don't have to worry about that. Anyway, that's that's my theory. But yeah, definitely a Zoom call preferable. In person, not so much. Phone call, absolutely no way. Um, the in person thing's interesting as well. So one of the things I noticed today is that my hair is uh, getting a bit unkempt, a bit long. Uh, the beard's a bit unkempt as well. I have spent most of my adult life, at least since I was 20 or so, the majority of my time I've had like a shaved head. And the reason for that 
is that I hate going to the hairdressers. I hate going to the barbers. You have to talk to someone. You have to explain what you want. You have to leave the house in the first place. So what usually happens is um, I'll grow it for a bit until it gets to about this length. I'll decide I need to get it cut. Uh, I'll put off getting it cut for a good couple of weeks. Sorry, that wasn't a sleigh bell, that was a cat. Um, I'll put off getting it cut for a couple of weeks, it'll get too long, uh, and I'll just get fed up and shave it. I'm actually quite proud of myself. This this is two haircuts in, so I've not shaved it for, I don't know, a few months. Cause I've had two haircuts. So maybe I'll, I'll pluck up the courage to actually go to the barbers later on today. We'll see. We'll see anyway. I'm kind of really aware of my saying name. I think I'm doing okay so far. The The other thing about the social anxiety is work from home. So at the moment, my current job, um, I have the option to work from home pretty much whenever I want. Uh, my team, the, the other people on the team I work with, are mostly based in London. I'm up north, so I'm in Wigan, which my nearest like office base is Salford. So I could go into Salford. I could go into Salford like once a week, twice a week, just to get that office environment. The reason I don't do that, the excuse I've come up with in my head, is that none of my team are based in Salford, so even if I did go into the office, I'd still just be sat there on my own pretty much which it, it's ridiculous like I know I know from past experience from just how I am that a hundred percent work from home is not good for my mental health like I don't I don't enjoy going to the office on a day-to-day -day basis I don't enjoy having to interact with people again I'm like a a day-to-day -day basis but I think I need that I think I need that exposure to other people like I need that having to interact with people and have conversations with them otherwise my mental health just plummets and I think that's probably a factor not not the only thing but probably a factor in how I've been feeling the last few months um I just said um I just said um didn't I? Oh well. So yeah, I need to start going into the office. And this is something I probably say to myself like every um six every few months. Like I need to start going into the office, I need to schedule like a day a week where I go in. And then it'll get to that day a week and I realise that, you know, I've got to take the kids to school, I've got to pick the kids up from school. I just, like, I can't face the traffic, um, the fuel, like, it costs a lot to drive there. There's always something. Uh, and, I, and this is what I mean about the, the anxiety being quite insidious and subtle. There's always, there's always a reason for not going outside. There's always a reason for not going to work. Um, there's always some kind of excuse for the avoidance technique that I'm using to avoid doing that thing. And I need to get better at just pushing through that. I think going to the office a little bit would be really useful for me. I think maybe... Like I did take up a hobby... Last year I started doing archery, which I think I enjoyed for a few months. Um, when I first started I was reasonably good at it and then I sort of hit this plateau where I didn't get better. And I think that put me off um, because clearly I'm some kind of raging narcissist and I can't handle not being good at something. Obviously, like, look at me, I'm a typical narcissist. But... Yeah, just like, but then it, it's really hard just making the effort to meet people and like, I'm 44 years old, how how do you make friends? What, what do you even do with friends? 
Like, do I want friends? Do I just... Like, I don't know. I think if I was... I may have said this in a past video, but... If I didn't have family... And I didn't have to... Like, live in the real world and do a job... I'd be quite... Maybe not... Like, happy is a strong word, but I think I'd probably... Live in a lighthouse somewhere... And have a beard down to my knees and be a, a smelly old hermit... And that'd probably be fine... But no, instead, I've got a family, I've got kids who I don't want to pass all this on to. Um, stupid. I need to stop saying them, stop saying them. So I need to get better at socialising, that's what the therapy's for. Hopefully it'll help me deal with some of this. I might even go and try and get my hair cut later, we'll see. Anyway, I fear I am rambling a little bit, so I'm going to sign off by showing a lovely picture of our Christmas tree. And Hazel, who is down here, looking very cute. Hey, Hazel. Um, yeah, and I guess I might make another video next week, but if not, Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Thank you for everyone who's subscribed recently. I think I'm up to nearly 35 whole subscribers, which is incredible um i hope these videos are helping in some way and people might be getting something useful from them and if not then fine they're helping me i'll be able to look back on these and actually have some memories which will be handy but anyway yes merry christmas bye